Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Stacey West Preview Show. Uh, it's Friday night. We've got Cheltenham away uh, tomorrow as I speak. We are joined of John uh, John from the Gloucestershire Live. John, how are you doing, mate? I'm very well, thanks, Jake. Good to speak to you. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Obviously, not looking forward to the, the game uh, tomorrow. I think a lot of Lincoln fans are sort of going into it, um, dreading. Uh, the performance and, and, and possibly the outcome. Um, just from a professional point of view, John, you might not have stopped to go into games, but I've just sort of been asking this to people this season. How has it been you know, to be back in grounds where there's supporters? Because obviously, you, you know, you're a journalist, you'd have been in the press box um, last year for Ch- uh, Cheltenham, a really good year for them, uh, you know, winning the title, etc. How good is it to have uh, that set of supporters back in the, at Wadden Road? Yeah, it was, it was a really strange season last season because, like you said, Cheltenham were doing really well, winning the league, uh, Man City in the FA Cup, and nobody was there to see it. So it did feel a little bit hollow, even though they had a great season. So uh, we were lucky enough as media to actually get to the games, but it wasn't the same without the fans. And this season's been to come back uh, with fans in League One was a great way to welcome them back. So, mm. yeah, it's been infinitely better. And that's what you know football's all about. It was, last season just felt like it was just keeping it going until the fans could come back in. But this feels like real football again. Is they're quite a noisy bunch because, like we said, when I we was just talking off air and the last time I said I sort of came to Cheltenham was the, the day when they won the National League. And, you know, I can just remember it was the, the place was bouncing. Is that still, you know, something similar that, that, that that's still going on down there? Because obviously the, the promotion last year, the, the, the fans must be buzzing to be back at this level. Yeah, I think there, there were just over 5,000 there that day. And that there was the club was on a real high under Gary Johnson then got over 100 points in the National League. They've had a little bit of a struggle um, initially when they got back into the Football League. And I remember the last time Lincoln came um, was quite early on in Michael Duff's reign and Lincoln were going well under the Carolies and, and played yeah. Cheltenham off the park, really, at 2-0. And Cheltenham have come a long way since then. So I think Duff has brought those sort of good times back, got everyone back together again. And the fans are right behind him. Obviously, they, they didn't have a good result on Tuesday, which we'll chat yeah. about in a minute, but it it's generally gone very well this season to be 12th at this stage, you know, it's beyond most fans wildest dreams really. So he duffs the man who's, who's got the club going again after that um, couple of seasons of struggle after they got back into the football league. Uh, just before we do touch on, on that game against Cambridge on, on Tuesday night, I just want to talk about Michael Duff, obviously one of the most respected managers in, in league one. Is there a worry that, because of the job that he's doing at Cheltenham, similar to what we've seen Ryan Lowe sort of do over the last week, and we've you know Lincoln fans have experienced with the Cowley brothers, etc. Is there a slight chance that that Michael Duff is courted by one of these Championship teams looking to take a gamble on a, a manager that's proved themselves at the lower levels? Definitely, yeah, definitely. I think he's he's starting to get mentioned for jobs. He's starting to you know he's in he was in the running when you look at the bookies' odds for the Cardiff job, for the MK Dons job. I think. I think most Cheltenham fans are now getting to the same stage where they expect him to get an opportunity at a bigger club. And I think, you know, although they'd love him to stay, I think realistically they'd realise they've got to enjoy it while it lasts. A bit like when Carley was at Lincoln and the Carleys were at Lincoln and they were, you know, everything was buzzing, two promotions, FA Cup runs. Yeah. It, 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 everyone from the outside was intrigued to see where he was going to go, where his next move was going to be, but everyone expected it to come. And I think it's getting to that point with Duff now. If they'd have, if they'd have started the season badly, you know, and, and struggled and, and been bottom of the league, maybe his stock would have gone down a little bit. But just by getting the promotion last season has definitely put him in, in thoughts of a lot of clubs. And I think now that the way that Cheltenham have started the season to be 12th, you know, remember Cheltenham have never finished higher than 17th in League One. And even though there's a long way to go, they, they look fully capable of beating that. So I think he's he's firmly on course to manage at a higher level. And I, I just think that when he does go, he will go with everyone's best wishes, but, you know, enjoy it while he's at the club. Uh, and you work with with um, Michael on a quite a regular basis, obviously uh, uh, covering the games and stuff like that. What is it about him and his personality, and perhaps even you know the way that he's got Cheltenham playing football? What what will be the key assets that he's got that will attract him to these bigger jobs? Um, temperament is very good. Doesn't get too up. Doesn't get too down. He was very measured after the five 0 defeat on Tuesday. He didn't 
sort of write off the whole team and say he's going to sack them all and bring in a load of new players. He's quite he's quite stable. I'd say he's, he's yeah he's, his temperament is good. His man management's very good. But I think what what I've seen that I really think he will he will go higher is his ability to spot a tactical detail in a game and change it very quickly. And quite regularly last season, Cheltenham would maybe not everything wasn't going to plan. He would spot something during the first half or at half time, make a tactical tweak, and the game would would ch- turn on its head. So he's got that in his locker as well. He's obviously had a great career right the way from a lower league, lower level of non league football all the way up to the Premier League, and I think that's also stood him in good stead. That he know, I think he understands football football is at different levels. So he understands what League Two, League One players are all about. I think he also understands what the higher level elite players are all about. And that, that's another thing that makes me think he can go on and, and manage higher. The fact that he's been up there himself as a player, but he had to he had to fight and scrap his way up, you know, in his career. And he, he got rejected a lot early on. And I think that's made him quite a sort of well rounded character. Um, you mentioned that that defeat then on, on Tuesday night. Let, let's have a look at that. Five nil to, you know, a fellow promoted team in, in Cambridge United who they were very good last season, but were obviously lost their top goal scorer to Wrexham very um, sort of bizarrely. Um, what sort of went wrong for Cheltenham really that night? Because, you know, you look at the, the scoreline as an outsider and you think Cambridge must have been completely dominant throughout. Was that was that the case? Uh, well, the first half was the Cheltenham were playing against a very strong wind in the first half. And I thought at half time, only being 1-0 down, I thought, you know, still in the game with the wind, with the conditions in their favour in the second half. So, Sam Smith scored. He was on loan at Cheltenham last season. He, he came back and scored. Um, didn't celebrate his goal, so fair play to him. But 1-0 at half-time, and I think most Cheltenham fans would have probably taken that with the conditions. But the second half was where it really went wrong. So the, the second goal was an own goal from Matty Pollock, 52nd minute. And I think that that was the sort of killer blow and the head seemed to go down. And then Joe Ironside scored a hat-trick, sort of mm. quite a quick fire hat-trick. And I think most Cheltenham fans probably expected to get a couple of thumpings in League One and they've lost 5-0 at Sunderland, but I don't think they expected to lose 5-0 at home to Cambridge. So mm. it was it was a real blow and very, very un like with the way they played and the way they almost seemed to chuck the towel in towards the end, which was what Duff was most worried about. But he does tend to get a decent reaction after a, a poor result. And uh, they, they only lost two games in a row once throughout the whole of the last season. So they're pretty sort of resilient. When they do have a setback, they normally come back quite strong. Yeah, I was I was sort of just going to ask you that, um, in terms of how you think Michael Duff will, will react to, to a, such a heavy defeat. Um, obviously, we sort of spoke before we came on air as well that they decided to play at three at the back. looks like a five in midfield as well. Do you think Duff, you know, given his tactical intelligence, do you think he might look to switch that round for tomorrow afternoon? Well, he, he has favoured the 3-5-2 for most of his reign and that, that's what they played pretty much for the whole, well, I'd say every game last season, they started with the back three. This season, he's sort of used, sometimes he's used a diamond midfield and gone with the back four. Um, he, I think his his team looks at their best when they do play a back three. Uh, the problem he's had is Ben Toza, a bit like Paul Mullin, left a promoted team from League Two to League One to join Wrexham. So that was the club captain. Yeah. Then the rest of the other two defenders who were in that back three last season that were so solid, Will Boyle and Charlie Raglan have both been injured long term. Uh, Raglan could be back. Well, he was on the bench um, and came on on Tuesday, but he could be back for his first start on Saturday. So that would be that would be a lift. But I think he'll be a back three again. I think he'll go back to three five two. It's the formation that they know best. He, he sort of he, the, the front end of the team was a bit strange on Tuesday. He played Alfie May up front almost on his own with who's, who's a, a very small striker with with Dan Crowley just off him, who's, who's also very small. Very skillful, but very small. There was no sort of physicality in there. And Callum Wright was another attacking midfielder. But I think I can see either Vassell, uh, Carl Vassell or Andy Williams or Carl Joseph coming in up front to give a little bit more um, aerial prowess. Um, and May can obviously play off them because it didn't work on Tuesday. So I think it'll be 3-5-2. But I think one of, the, one of those strikers I mentioned will come in um, up front alongside May. Um, now, obviously, the given the, the roster of the two teams, there's a, a few names that both sets of supporters will, um, will will sort of look back with, with quite fond memories. Um, in terms of the, the Cheltenham fans, Josh Griffiths is a, a player that was on loan at, at Cheltenham last season. Um, I think we've sort of seen in the, the short five months that we've seen of Josh, how exceptionally a good goalkeeper that he is with strong rumours linking that he might be sent back to West Brom um, sort of in the upcoming window. Can you just let us know about your memories about Josh Griffiths when he played in that title winning side last year? 
Yeah, he, he was exactly, as you said, exceptional. Um, he made 50 appearances. I think he played in 44 of the 46 league games, only missing two due to international duty. And he was, you know, considering he was, he made his debut on his 19th birthday. Uh, he was outstanding. And I think he, that one of the most impressive things was he got, he got beaten by a, 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 the longest ever goal from a new, the Newport goalkeeper, Tom King, beat him from yep. a goal kick. Um, that was just before the Man City game. Uh, but he didn't let it affect him and he came back um, and, and that was the most impressive thing about him with his temperament again didn't didn't let the odd mistake affect him absolutely superb and I know Charlton were really keen to bring him back this season but he obviously chose to go to Lincoln and, and Scott Flinders has done well since reclaiming his place in goal but Flinders couldn't get in last season because of Griffith's form and that is a big tribute because Flinders is um, 35 and had a really good career at some good clubs so he he was excellent, and um, you know I think he'll get a very good welcome back on Saturday. Even though the fans very rarely saw him play, uh, yeah. they will know what a, a contribution he made uh, to Cheltenham's title win last season. And then a few names in the the Cheltenham side from Tuesday night that that Lincoln fans will recognise. Um, Long at the back, obviously was part of the team that, that went on that historic cup run um, in um, when we got promoted out of the national league ourselves. Uh, he's been at Cheltenham quite a while. I think he. he um, he joined Cheltenham upon leaving Lincoln City. How has he sort of settled in, especially because we played him more as a right wing back, right back, and he looks to be playing that right centre back role at the moment. Um, how's he? How's he sort of got on since he's uh, arrived in Gloucestershire? Yeah, he came in in the summer of 2018, and his first season was absolutely ruined by injury. He missed virtually the whole season and only came back towards the end, so he'd hardly played in that season. That then he came back, um, played right wing back a lot and did very well in, in that 3-5-2 formation that Duff liked. Then he he started last season again um, with an injury and Matty Blair sort of came in and, re, and and claimed the right wing back spot ahead of him. Since then, he's he's, he's filled in a few different positions. He's played centre midfield um, even in a couple of games last season, but mostly he went into the back three and that's where he's played throughout this season. He's been ever present and I think he's probably been, I would say, up there in the top two, arguably Cheltenham's player of the year so far. So he, he he wouldn't have been an automatic choice had Tozer, Boyle and Ragnan all stayed, stayed fit or stayed at the club. But he's he's come in, uh, he's been captain in the side um, in the absence of Will Boyle um, and he's really a good competitor, never let anybody down and like I said, he's played in a few different positions. He's quite popular with the fans. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he, he's been a really good signing. He was a Gary Johnson signing in the summer of 2018, as you said, from Lincoln. And it just it's just a shame that part of his time has been ruined by a couple of serious injuries. But he's when he has played, so he's already made um, 25 appearances this season and he's he's done very well. But obviously he's one of the defenders that will be looking at Tuesday night thinking, you know, we need to defend a little bit better than that. But overall, he's been excellent. And I think the one that, that Lincoln fans will most be wanting to hear about, Ellis Chapman is, is somebody that came through the ranks at Lincoln, was extremely highly rated at the football club. Um, let go and, and obviously came to Cheltenham. I think it was a drop down division at the time. Um, how's his sort of journey been at the football club? Because I think as a as a support base, we always saw the potential in, in Ellis, um, but perhaps he didn't realise it a hundred percent of the time. Um, has has his sort of attitude changed perhaps to to not being at a club where he's come through the youth academy and he's not sort of glared at as as much as he was when he was here? Yeah, I think yeah. when he came in. When he came in, it would have been October last year he came in. And I think people were a bit surprised that Cheltenham signed him because they were talking about not having any money. And then Ellis Chapman came in. Obviously, Lincoln announced that they, they were uh, retaining a financial interest in him. Should he get a move, they would obviously get a chunk of the fee. But I think Cheltenham signed him very much as one for the future. They liked his uh, height, his left foot, his composure, his, his passing ability. They knew that he could play at left wing back if needed. But it's definitely been in midfield where he's made most of his appearances for Cheltenham. And... He, he played a pass this season against Bolton, a uh, two-all draw at Bolton. That's one of that's going to be one of the passes of the season to set up yeah. Alfie May for a goal. Um, I don't know if you saw that, but yeah. he's been he's been excellent. He does need, I would say, um, some grafters. I'm not saying that he's lazy, but he's he's somebody that likes to get on the ball and take his time and pick passes. I think he needs somebody alongside him to sort of maybe shield and, and do a bit of the ball winning work. Yeah. But he has got, you know, he has got a good frame. And I think that's probably improved since he's been at Cheltenham. He's actually played a lot more regularly this season in League One than he did last season in League Two. So he's had, he's had a couple of injury problems last season. And, and I think now he's starting to show 
you know, what a talent he is and why Cheltenham were, were so keen to bring him in. Um, because he does tick that box of being able to cover for Chris Hussey at left wing back. But it's certainly in a sort of deep line midfield role in that 3-5-2, maybe with one other player next to him and then a number 10 supporting the two strikers that he's he's really looked good. So I've been quite impressed with him. He's, he's got a good attitude. I think he has maybe put in the sort of dirty side of the game a little bit more since, since Duff has been coaching him. And so I think he's, you know, he's only 20 still, isn't he? So I think he's still yeah. got a chance of maybe going on to play at a higher level again, I think, if he can um, continue the progress he's had. Because it doesn't take long for a club to start looking at you if you're playing passes like that, like yeah. what he did yeah. against Bolton. So, yeah, I think he's he's, he's showing what he can do now. Um, I'm just sort of curious to, to get your thoughts on Lincoln as well. Um, obviously, as a, a journalist, you'll be sort of well-rounded with your research and things like that. Um, with Lincoln getting to the playoff final last year, uh, and it seems to be a bit of a drop this year. I think we're sat in 18th currently in, in League One. Um, I'm not sure how much you would have seen of us, maybe just a few highlights on Quest, but... Are you surprised to see Lincoln so far down the table, given, you know, Michael Appleton's stature and credibility in the game and, and all that sort of stuff, you know, the playoff final last year? Um, but then, yeah, I suppose, you look at the, the outgoings that, that the club had over the summer and, you know, you, the um, it's difficult to replace that much quality, isn't it? Yeah, I have been surprised, you know, and I've, I've seen a lot of predictions of tables and things like that in League One and pretty much everyone I saw, and it certainly would have applied to my predictions would have had Lincoln right up there again after last season and, and most people would have had Cheltenham right down you know as, yeah. and, you know, unsurprisingly really right down at the bottom with the likes of Morecambe and maybe Cambridge but I think I think I have been surprised I was particularly surprised with the result on Tuesday um, yeah. I know there was a red card there was a red card and, and two quick penalties and I think Michael Duff did feel having watched the game um, that one of them was very harsh yes. so maybe it didn't wasn't a fair reflection of the, the way the game went but it looks like it looks like Lincoln are having their rough patch at the moment. Yeah. Um, Cheltenham had one before the first international break where they got thumped 5 0 at Sunderland and took a couple of beatings by Wigan and Rotherham as well. Um, but they've definitely um, improved since then. I'm, I'm sure Lincoln will, will, will not be down there um, come the end of the season. I think I've, I know how highly Michael Duff rates Michael Appleton, and I certainly think he's a very good, capable manager, you know, what he achieved last season. And yeah. it's not easy, is it, to carry on from the likes of the Carolies when. Uh, yeah. With the job they did, so I think he's he's try, you know he's done well to, to sort of continue that last season with the playoff appearance and get get to the final. And I still think the club's in a good place, isn't it? You'll know a lot more than me, but I know yeah. crowds have massively grown since yeah. the Cowleys sort of took over in the National League. And yeah, I've I've been surprised, uh, but I don't think they'll be down there. Um, obviously, I haven't seen them play for a full ninety minutes live this season, but I've, I've kept an eye on it, particularly because of Josh Griffiths. Yeah. Um, Right from the start of the season, I think he might have had a, a tricky start at, at Gillingham, if I remember correctly, on his debut. Yeah. But I know he's he's done well since then. And yeah, I, I, all I would say is Cheltenham certainly won't be expecting it to be an easy game on Saturday, especially when they just lost five 0 at home. But they'll they'll know that Lincoln are in need of a result as well. So yeah, I think it's uh it's it's, it's going to be an interesting one. Two teams sort of desperately trying to get back on track. Yeah, I sort of just want to look at look ahead to tomorrow afternoon. Um. What are you really expecting um, in terms of Cheltenham and, and the way they might approach the game? Uh, obviously, given the fact that they've they've um, uh, been beaten by five goals to nil at home in front of their own crowd, and you know, given the fact that Lincoln have only scored I think two goals in the in the last eight games, and um, is this a game that Cheltenham? You know, I know you said earlier that they're not going to think it's an, an easy game, but is this a game that they'll be looking at thinking we can pick up a positive result of some kind here? Duff, Duff keeps saying that you know they can't pick and choose which games they think they're going to get points from because they they've upset the likes of Ipswich and Charlton um, and got got a couple of other good results away to Portsmouth they got a draw home to Sheffield Wednesday but then they've lost to you know what people would have maybe looked at the Cambridge game and thought well that's the chance for three points so I don't think they'll be classifying it in that sort of easier game category and I think Duff's Duff's foundation since he took over has been built on a solid defence but they've been letting in. Well, they're letting four at Wimbledon in the FA Cup on Saturday. Mm. They're letting two against Bolton in their, their league game before, although that was a creditable result, 2-2 draw. So he, I think tomorrow he'll be focusing on trying to get that solidity back. I think Raglan will come back in, who, who could help with that, because he's been missing for quite a long time with a knee injury. Um, but I think it'll be quite, it might be quite a cagey one. I don't think it'll be as open as some of the games Cheltenham have had recently, mm. where they've sort of been a little bit gung-ho and, and sort of thrown a lot of men forward. I think they might try and be a bit more solid um, and they'll, they'll also know that if Chelten, if they score first uh, Lincoln with the run they've been on recently may be lacking confidence 
Yeah. So I think they'll see the importance of that. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a draw, to be honest. Um, yeah. if, I, if I, you know, if I was going to make a prediction, I'm not just just because of the run Lincoln have been on. I don't think Cheltenham are just going to turn up and win easily. And the Cheltenham have got quite a good record overall against Lincoln at home. But I can see this one um, being quite a, quite a tight one. Lovely. Well, thank you very much, John, for for coming on the uh, on the preview show. Where can Lincoln City fans find your work and your um, sort of overall verdict of of tomorrow afternoon's proceedings? Uh, they can follow my stuff on Gloucestershire Live, which is the Gloucestershire equivalent of the Lincoln Echo, I suppose, and uh, also Twitter at John Palmer Sport. I'll be I'll be keeping. You know, if anyone wants to follow that tomorrow, if they can't make it to the game, I'll certainly be um, tweeting all the the key events from the game throughout the afternoon. And uh, thanks very much for for the chat, Jake. It's been it's been good. Absolutely. Well, thank you, everybody else, for listening. Thank you to to John once again. And uh, we'll be back for another preview next week. Thank you very much for listening.